My name is Alyssa and I'm interested in the computer arts and motion graphics design major. What inspires me personally is seeing other creatives works, people my age um, and what they're doing, for example, seeing what their mission is and what they stand for and the kind of projects that they make. Because seeing someone your age um, excelling at something that you want to do really gives you inspiration for that and then you can find after introspection what you really value and that just inspires me and I can find a lot of ideas in myself and just seeing um, inspiration photos that I take even. I think keeping a sketchbook definitely does help but when I first started making my portfolio I just wanted to go straight into doing and didn't really make thumbnails or sketches of my work but as the time went on and I had to get out of my comfort zone to make more works in a shorter period of time I really had to make sketches to experiment with different use of materials, color schemes or different applications to get the work flowing faster so I can get those drawings and paintings done faster and this, when I started to implement the sketches into my work, I created one of my few of my strongest works, especially when it came to doing the Cooper Union test. A theme that runs through my work is that of nostalgia and overall that kind of one-of-a-kind feeling. I want to describe special feelings that you don't get very often or every day, and I achieved this by using certain color schemes with a lot of pinks and reds and blues and as well as having high contrast in my works between the dark and lights. A lot of my works are hyper, are more on the hyper realistic side because that's kind of what I grew up and what I get inspired by and see. But when I was almost finished making my portfolio, my teacher really pushed me to be more expressive and be more abstract in a way, so I started to do more expressive works, more expressive strokes, and just getting out of my comfort zone. So I feel like at the end you can definitely see that I start to become a little bit less hyper-realistic. I feel like for me and my friends at the studio, we didn't know what we wanted to do, we didn't know what our themes were going to be, so we just kind of just went straight into it, and as the months went on, we kind of realized, like, it kind of all pieced together, and at the end, especially, we were able to piece everything together like a puzzle and just realize, like, oh, that makes sense, like, they all connect. That's kind of what happened. So I actually had a series of works. It started off with my self-portrait, and from the start, I drew my eyes very ambiguously and kind of just, like, they drew, drew, drew you in. So my teacher wanted to make it a series and we decided to secondly make a hyper-realistic drawing, painting of my eye and inside play a little bit on the contrast of colors like blue and red. Um, and then from the eye as again, I was trying to become more expressive and more abstract, we came up with another drawing of a more abstracted painting of the eyes. But the Cooper Union home test was definitely very, very challenging and took my last efforts, my last juice that I had left in me because it was very time consuming and in such a short amount of time but I think it was so worth it because through it I really pushed myself and I found kind of a side of myself that I didn't really know I had before and when, when it comes to art making like I became very expressive and one of the pieces for it was this storybook that I drew very expressively and my teachers were like wow this is amazing like you're so expressive I love your strokes and like and when I thought about that I was like I don't really see it but okay that's cool and then another piece that I really loved that came out of me making the Cooper Union test was a sculpture of 
hands and a pillow, which was from for the prompt a view from your arms to a hug. And I personally am mostly drawings, paintings. I didn't really do a lot of sculptures for portfolio. So when I did that sculpture, I ended up really loving it. I learned Revit and Lumion outside of Ashcan, so I did them on my own and I used them to create a vision that I had in my head for an island that recycles its own materials and is made from recyclable materials because there is an island in Tokyo it's called Odaiba and it is made from recycled waste and materials and I was really inspired by it because I feel like every day, especially living in New York, there's always so much trash in the streets and it would be so nice if it wasn't there and if it was a utopia, like Tokyo, I feel like it's really clean in Tokyo. So I was really inspired by it and wanted to recreate something like that in New York City and it is of course on digital but you know, you never know, it might be in real life soon. Mm -hmm. One time that I remember feeling really badly about my work was when I found out about the Young Arts competition and I rushed the whole process in my paintings to complete it, to finish it. So I had to finish the competition in two weeks and I ended up not getting anything and it really made me feel disappointed and very dissatisfied with my art and just starting to doubt like was I like is my art good in the first place and that was really just like really nerve-wracking but I talked to my teacher about it and she told me that these competitions tend to be rigged and tend to choose things that are less conceptual but more are about what's happening in the world kind of and then she just later just made me feel good about the progress that I made and she told me that it was really just you against you, so it's kind of like you against your own progress. And she told me how far it came, and I could really see my own progress. So that definitely made me feel better. Definitely the main thing in overcoming doubts of anything, especially in art, is talking to a teacher that knows better and can see your progress from like a bird's eye view, a third, per a third perspective. Because I feel like sometimes you feel that you have been stagnant or have been making progress, but they can see your artwork like from a full view, a 360 view, and really tell you and therefore make you feel better. The first piece I would like to talk about is Dear Little One, and that piece really connects to my theme of nostalgia because I took the reference for this photo when I was walking home one night and I saw a pink ice cream truck making a U-turn, but the song was not repeat and there was no children lined up at such a late hour. And I just found that to be such a strange moment to happen and I wanted to document it. Another piece of my work that I really liked is Cluttered. That piece is very experimental and it was very fun to make and it was surprisingly very quick to make as well. That piece I got to experiment with a lot of materials such as spray paint, ink, um, charcoal, pen, and it was very fun to see the process from making the background, putting gesso on it, applying more, more materials and different applications and different uses and then drawing the final still life on it to finish it all together and it just came out looking very full and vibrant and just fun. And the third piece that I really liked was an object study called Perm Press All is Sad, Bad and Mad and smeared it on a plate and crushed up chalk and all of this was part of an um, object study that we all did collectively at Ashkin, like in the beginning of summer, so everyone had to do it. And it was really fun and exciting to see other people's works. So when I did mine, it made me feel like a mad scientist and fully in control and just being able to document that was really fun. 
The most difficult part of making an art portfolio was definitely feeling that your art was stagnant and wasn't going anywhere, especially after you've been working on it for so long but don't see any progress. And it just makes you feel that you've hit a plateau and that it's not like improving at all. The most fun part of Ashkan and the whole portfolio experience was definitely the people that I met there and the friends that I made. I will never forget about them. It was just like the most amazing um, community and just heartwarming and it was just so kind and so nice and helpful to each other and I just love them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My advice to anyone that's making an art portfolio for colleges is to definitely just do it. Even if you feel unmotivated or you think that your art skills aren't good enough, it's always best to just try, then never do it, and then think of what could have happened, you know. My top three schools are Brad, SVA, and RISD because those schools are very rigorous at both the art and the academics, and they are very good at putting you out there and really preparing you for the industry. I stayed on track during my portfolio with keeping checks with my friends at the studio because we would all text each other or talk to each other and be like, oh, are you working this? Like, how is the progress on this? And then just really inspire each other to do better works. I began taking classes at Ashkin when I was in seventh grade and making my high school portfolio because I wanted to get into LaGuardia. I ended up learning and growing a lot and I ended up getting into it. And now three years later, I came back to do my college portfolio. Being at Ashkan definitely was extremely helpful because I got to work with amazing teachers who definitely not only help you, but really push you and help you out of your comfort zone so that you really do your best and what you can do. And it was just really amazing because I was sometimes shocked at what I can do because when I didn't know that I could do it. Art offers art portfolio preparation classes year round. Contact us at infomanhattan at ashcanart.com and see the classes we offer at www.ashcanart.com. You can see us on Instagram at ashcanart and please subscribe below for more art portfolio tips.